So we're going to tie a, a little jig fly in the style of a crayfish. This is a seven and a half gram jig. Uh, so we're going for something sort of eight-ish centimeters long here. So what we're going to do is take the pliers and squeeze down this little holding wire that's in place for soft plastics. And we're going to get our gel spoon on for tying the fly. And take it down towards the rear. So essentially this thing is going to fish this way up. So we're going to be tying the fly upside down for part of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this sort of coppery uh, crystal here. I'm going to take out just a couple of fibres of that there. And then double it over. Trim out those loops. Set that on top. I'll take a ruler and measure this. So we don't want our fly any longer than that. So that's eight centimeters in total. Right. A little bit of super glue just to fix that in place. And then we want some sort of fibers sticking out like that little horn thing that's on the front of a crate. So I'm going to use here the back of a bucktail because it's nice sort of straightish hair, brown, and it shouldn't splay overly much. Now I'm going to tie that in a bit shorter than uh, the flash that we had. Loose laps to start it off with. And once I get it in place, I'm going to bind it down. Okay. So now what we're going to do is uh, wind on a hackle, fairly large sort of a hackle just to give us a bit of display at the back. So something brown, basically. Pick this one. Double that over. that on, touch and turns here. I'm going to say we wanted something fairly large so that it gives us that bit of bulk and a bit of splay because we wanted to throw out the uh, pincers that we attach. Right. I'm now going to take some of these sort of orange stretchy leg things. I'm going to break off a couple of them. I'm going to tie these in on either side. So I'm tying it across its middle, pulling it across. Hopefully the two of those should be similar enough in length. tie that up to the back of our bunch. As you can see there's two on each side. So for the pincers I'm going to use, uh, this is a pine squirrel that's dyed orange and I've cut a strip off this. That's maybe sort of 3-4 mil wide. So I take that, set it on my side it in. I'm 
and cut that off. And I'll use the other part of it measured out to the same length on the far side. give us the idea of two pincers. And it should sit out a little bit because of the bunch of materials that we tied in there. And I'm just going to set that on place with a bit of super glue. it's upside down this stuff will sort of droop. I'm going to start tying upside down now. So I'll just drop the angle down a bit for you. So what I want is sort of like a casing for the top of this thing. So what I've got here is a cock pheasant rump patch that I have dyed in like a brown colour. I'm going to take out one of these sort of larger feathers here. I'm going to set that on top. And tie it in. So as I say, when this thing's fishing, you can see, well you might not be able to see because of the vices here, but it'll create like that plate effect of the head of the cray. So, crayfish have eyes. So here I have some mono that I have uh, burnt and then I got a little bit of uh, UV cure and I placed that on it and set it to create my two eyes. And I'm going to set those one on either side here, top of this plate. So, that's the hardest bit of the tying done. We're now going to progress along the body. Uh, so I'm going to use a bit of dubbing for that. And what I've done is I took a sort of a coppery kind of a flash and I mixed it with, uh, with a brown hair. This happened to be Arctic Fox, but seals fur, synthetic, whatever you feel like. So I'm going to create a sort of a ball there of that dubbing. Now we're going to go back to these orange rubber leg things. Take one of them, measure it up and cut that off. I'll set the other bit aside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it across its middle, across the back here and then I'll pull it on either side forward and down and this will give us the idea of legs so now we take another one of our cock pheasant rump feathers same idea, tying it in as a plate on the top again and even if some of the fibres of it want to sort of come down around the body, that's fine. Tie that in. Tighten that down. A little bit of super glue, because these things are intended for fish with teeth. And then another bottle of dubbing, and basically we're going to repeat these steps then until we get to the front of the fly. So we Make our dubbin loop. Create a ball of dubbin. Take the other half of the silly legs things that we had. Tie it across the middle. 
pulled it, pull it down to the side, tie it in position. And another cock pheasant feather. Once you get close to the ball it can be quite difficult to just hold these in position on top. And you'll probably impale yourself on the hook a few times while you're doing that. A little bit super clear. Glue yourself to the fly. That's just trying to fold the angle of the stock to tie in down a little bit there. Each time I've been getting these feathers slightly shorter and shorter. super glue onto the final bit there and then while that's still wet I'm going to take the last bunch of our dubbin and dub over that to finish the fly. A couple of half hitches and because it's with the side of the uh, ball it'll side of it, under the dubbin. So then when we add a little bit of super glue into that, that'll set all in place and that is our greyfish finished. So hopefully that gives you the idea. bounce along the bottom. These things pretend to be legs and these things will flap about as uh, pincers now. I'm sure they'll tangle a bit as you cast them. Personally I don't like weedless stuff. I think it reduces and less takes but if you wanted you could always use a weedless jig to tie that but uh, there we go. A crayfish jig.